Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks very much uh, for your time and presence here today. Uh, I'd like to obviously acknowledge and welcome the Minister for Police and Community Safety, the Honourable Jack Dempsey, uh, to police his headquarters. Um, and the Minister has uh, just had a briefing on a range of issues with more briefings to come next week. So, Minister, I invite you to uh, address the group. And then after the Minister speaks, we're happy to take questions on uh, any issue you'd like to ask. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, uh, today I've had an extensive briefing from the Commissioner and a number of uh, members of the Queensland Police Service in relation to the illegal fire firearms here in Queensland. It's been an extensive briefing and from that briefing, we've also, uh, from today, is we'll be looking at uh, a number of um, legislative uh, requirements in relation to illegal firearms. And what we're from first up right up, I'd like to put it, leave any concerns for the, the people who are doing the right thing, the, the good, honest people of Queensland, that uh, we'll be looking at legislative changes and tougher penalties in relation to illegal firearms. The briefing also uh, was also around the areas of uh, cooperation with other states and other federal bodies in relation to the federal police and the custom agencies to ensure that we have a collaborative approach to illegal firearms and to ensure that we have uh, the policies and the legislative requirements in place to uh, meet the expectations of all Queenslanders. The other side of that was also uh, fulfilling making sure we have the fulfilment of the LNP government in that we will be getting tough on crime and particularly in relation to illegal firearms. And uh, we're addressing that with the first 1,100 police officers over the next four years, the returning of 200 non-operational police to the actual streets, and also as well as a million dollars commitment to crime stoppers and uh, as well as the, uh, the uh, <coughs> pardon me, the, uh, the other community-based uh, operations. Thanks, uh, thanks very much, Minister, and uh, uh, feel free, obviously, to raise an issue about uh, firearms, but if there are any other matters uh, while we're here that um, we can uh, comment on, happy to do that as well. Senior officers have known for at least 18 months that the figures were bad and getting worse. Why is it only today that something's being done? Uh, well, we've been monitoring this very closely. Um, as you know, um, last year we established the Serious Violent Crime Squad on the Gold Coast. Uh, in January this year, we uh, tasked five officers, extra officers, specifically within State Crime Operations Command, to address the uh, illegal firearms trade and, and monitor that. Um, uh, so we were monitoring those those increases, uh, and whilst obviously we are we are very concerned uh, about the use of illegal firearms associated with crime, and some of the developments and occurrences in recent times. Uh, we are, you know, intensely uh, investigating those two murders at the moment, uh, and we are doing all we can. Uh, and what the minister has outlined is the extra commitment uh, in terms of the government. And I am very grateful for that. Those additional 1,100 police over four years, and there will be 300 additional in Queensland in the first year. That's this financial year, starting from the 1st of July 2012. Uh, and as well with the commitments to establish a major crime squad on the Gold Coast and have a particular additional presence on the Gold Coast that will work uh, almost exclusively uh, in terms of the illegal firearm um, trade and activity and the trade of firearms in crime. So I think we have been doing things and certainly it's planned and intended to continue um, activity into the future as well. The Minister mentioned um, the review by the government or consideration by the government of uh, legislative change and working in terms of the national agenda because this is not a problem that's confined to Queensland as we would have all seen. Um, this is a problem that's Australia-wide. Uh, Minister, you talk about legislative changes in a general sense. Do you have anything specific that um, you, you want to implement? I think uh, the Queensland's the general population has had a... Uh, a uh, feedback, obviously, even at the last election of their uh, 
their opinions in relation to the, the sentencing options that are handed out by magistrates. And uh, whilst uh, you know the, the judicial system reflects the uh, the uh, the ideas of the community and the expectations of the community, we have seen a number of uh, a smaller penalty options taken place, and uh, we will be looking at ways of of, of strengthening those. Uh, sentencing options to meet community expectations and ensure that all Queenslanders know that when they go home and when they go into their bed at night that they are safe. Minister, you've only been in the job a short time but <coughs> what was your reaction to hear that more than 500 registered firearms are going missing in Queensland every year? Look, we have to put this in uh, in relation to, uh, to, to other states and uh, but what anything to do with a firearm is a serious matter, and particularly an illegal firearm. And we've got to make sure that we address these issues in a sensible approach, but also that we have the visual presence of extra police out on the street meeting community expectations. Now, we have t over 10,000 fine professional police throughout the service that are on the streets through it from the top of Queensland to the bottom of Queensland. And we've got to ensure that they have the resources, but also that uh, they, they know that they have a commitment from the government to ensure that that visible is enforced on the street and we're doing that by working in with the Commissioner to ensure community expectations are met, particularly in the area of illegal firearms. Will uh, <coughs> more highly visible police reduce the number of illegal firearms? Well, we've seen in of recent days the majority of the firearm events have been opportune firearm in that the offences committed obviously have been very tragic, but the, the sourcing of those firearms have been from very much opportunistic uh, uh, crimes in relation to break and enters and stealings and so forth. So we have to ensure that that uh, visible presence is in there to act as a deterrent, but we've also got to enforce that, that deterrent up with, with uh, the proper uh, court action that meets community expectations. So the sentencing is, uh, is, the, is the main response to illegal firearms? Look, I'll be taking up with the Attorney General and the Cabinet to ensure that we meet community expectations in relation to getting tough on crime, but ensuring that I uh, work with the Commissioner to, uh, to, to work and get the advice in relation to addressing uh, illegal firearms. Do you have any thoughts yet, then, Minister, on the minimum penalty for possession of a concealed weapon? Look, I, I think uh, what I'd be doing, well, what I'll be doing there is working in with the, the Attorney General and the Cabinet and uh, also from advice from another, a number of key stake stakeholders, including the Commissioner and, uh, and others, to make sure that uh, we get this right for, to have community confidence. And as I said there before, people deserve to be, feel safe in their homes and in their beds at night, knowing that the, the trade of illegal firearms uh, is not condoned in this state. How long will these changes take to implement? Well, obviously, we'd like them as quick as possible, but uh, we've got to ensure that uh, we follow due process and uh, that we consult well and we uh, have the confidence of all Queenslanders to make sure that these, uh, these changes uh, are reflected on community expectations. Where, where are these 500 guns going a year in Queensland? Yeah, thank you. Um, Firstly, can I just say that uh, there's 600,000 um, registered legal firearms in Queensland. Over the last five years, the pattern of theft uh, from those that block of 600,000 has fluctuated. Uh, the best result we've ever had, which is still not good, uh, is 350 that were stolen in a given year. Um, five years ago it was 350, then it went to 450, then back to about 350, and last year it was over 500. Uh, and obviously that increases in concern. The way we're tracking this year uh, is that there'll be less stolen than there was last year, so that's a good sign that it's tracking to come down. Uh, the question, of course, your question, uh, was where do they go? Um, they would go to uh, uh, several areas. Firstly, there would be firearms um, enthusiasts, probably, who steal them and use them for their own purpose. For example, last week one of the firearms that was stolen uh, was a .177 calibre air gun, air handgun. That's the sort of thing that's used in competition shooting. Uh, and whilst it's still a firearm, 
uh, it's far less serious than a heavy calibre firearm like a 357 or a 44 or something something along <coughs> those lines. So that's one area. The, the most disturbing and concerning area though is that they are used in crime. Uh, now that's the, the most significant area. In some cases we believe um, they're being stockpiled. In other words, people involved in organised criminal activity are stockpiling them for potential future use. Uh, that's of concern for us, but the greatest concern is where they're stolen and used in criminal activity. Mm. And, and sorry, as the Minister indicated, sometimes these are opportunistic thefts. Uh, they're thefts from a country property where the people are away perhaps for the holidays. Someone goes to break into the house to see what's there. There's a gun safe and they steal them. You know, there's an opportunistic theft as well. Mm. The Home Affairs Minister suggested that our customs officers might be embedded in the New South Wales Police Force to deal with illegal um, firearms. Is there similar plans for the Queensland Police to do the same? Yeah. In, in his um, advice to us today, the Minister uh, indicated three things that he wanted. Uh, the first was that he, with his colleagues, would look at the legislation. The second was um, to obviously maximise police in activity. And the third thing he asked me to do, and which I will do, is look at the national level of activity and make sure we're fully represented there. Mm -hmm. So in answer to your question, uh, if the federal government came to us and said we'd like to have customs work more closely with the Queensland Police in this space, uh, and the Minister agreed, more than happy to do that. Are there a lot of firearms coming into Queensland um, via the post or um, means like that? Uh, inevitably there will be some. Um, the, the work on this tends to suggest um, that far more are going into New South Wales than are coming into Queensland. Um, but obviously these, the, that observation is, an, is, a, is a reasonable estimation based on the intelligence and information that's available. Philip, uh, New South Wales Police Commissioner suggested Australia might be moving towards an American style gun culture where people are just solving conflicts with handguns. Do you agree with that? I think um, that um, that is correct in terms of one of the disturbing things that we believe we're seeing is an escalation. So that if someone involved in the illegal drug trade decides for whatever reason, protection or enforcement of in, in illegally, to carry a firearm, and that becomes known within that culture of criminal activity, then someone else might get one too. So we're seeing that escalation. I don't think, though, that we have any concern at all uh, that we will go to um, a widespread uh, gun culture because we simply don't have the same legislation framework that exists in the United States of America. And in fact, what's happened in Australia post Port Arthur is actually a winding back of the availability of firearms. Before Port Arthur, the law across Australia was that if you were 17 years of age, you could go into any store that sold firearms and merchandise stores like Kmart used to sell firearms, and you could buy a firearm. Now, that's been completely wound back now. So the, the world we're in at the moment is, is one where it's probably the most restrictive legislation in Australia we've ever seen. But we're not talking about you know, the many, many people in Queensland here who legally own firearms and use them for genuine purposes. What we're talking about here is the criminal element. Uh, who illegally acquire firearms <coughs> and use them for criminal purposes. Is there going to be any changes to the permits of the people who legally have them to try and stop this sort of crime? Look, uh, we'll be looking at, uh, from a legislative perspective, um, all those issues, but we'll be targeting the illegal use of firearm. And I'll say again, those people who are... Who are um, using whether it be sporting shooters from the agricultural sector, firearms in relation to those operations have nothing to worry about. Yeah. Could I add to that? It, could, sorry, sorry, could I just add to that because I think it's a really important point. Mm. It's very, 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 very rare that anyone who's the legal owner of a firearm mm. uses that firearm as <coughs> an offence. That is very rare. Mm. Commissioner Philip Sabanger, is that his... The, the paedophile who was released, is that, I'm not too sure how you pronounce his surname, but Phil, he's apparently been released into the community. Um, he's living with his family. Is that appropriate, given that it's a, given his, given his criminal record and, the, yeah. and what he's perpetrated on children, should he be living in the community? That's a result of a court decision, Pat. That's a result of a court decision. 
Yes. Yeah, as you know, it's never been my practice um, to criticise the courts. I, my, I see my role as being responsible to you for running the police department, and I'm not straight into um, the situation where I've been critical of court decisions. Our job now uh, is under the ANCOR legislation, the, the relevant legislation, uh, to be involved in monitoring this person, uh, and we will uh, certainly undertake to do that. Minister, do you have any concerns? Look, I've had a, a briefing from the, uh, the Commissioner of Corrective Services this morning in relation to another, a number of matters, and part of that briefing was that one gentleman that you, uh, you spoke of, and uh, it's, it's addressing those concerns in the, uh, in, in, in the whole of the legislation of being, whilst they're, whilst they're in... This gentleman specifically, do you think it's appropriate that he's in the community? I, there, there is a number of provisions in place in, in relation to uh, to meeting that standard and the operation of, of, of putting that person back within the community. And at the present time, those those commitments are being met by corrective services and the other agencies to alleviate the concerns of any uh, any member of the community. What are those commitments? Well, I'm happy to get back to you, Patrick, in relation to the exact details, but uh, the, the uh, Corrective uh, Services Commissioner has uh, alleviated those concerns in relation to all the, ad the administration and the practices are in place and are being followed to the T to ensure the best uh, outcomes in relation to community service. Uh, Mr and Commissioner, you're confident that uh, you'll be able to protect him from the community if there was any sort of... Uh, uh, well, as we do with uh, all ANCOR offenders, um, we assess them in terms of their level of risk to the community and our response is based on our assessment of their level of risk to the community and we'll certainly do that in this case. Um, Mr Dempsey, uh, not so long ago you were <coughs> a sergeant walking the beat in, in Bundaberg, now you're the Commissioner's boss, sir. how does it feel? Oh look, uh, it's for me. I'm, I'm very proud and, uh, and honoured to be the uh, the minister for police and uh, community safety, and uh, and obviously uh, ensuring that we maintain the, the high standards of a professional and accountable police service for to, as I said there before, to meet the expectations of the of the of the community. And and it's and I think Queensland is uh, is very privileged and honoured to have a commissioner such as uh, Commissioner Bob Atkinson. And uh, you only have to, to look through the, uh, the, the, the barriers that he's crossed over a period of times and the things that he's addressed in relation to uh, recent tragedies with floods, the Morecambe incidents that's continuing and so on, to see that he, he has uh, a great deal of respect to the community. But does it feel a little bit weird for you to be his, uh, his boss now? Look, it's, it's a great privilege to work with the Commissioner in a professional uh, uh, partnership and uh, I look forward to, uh, to, uh, to working together as a team because uh, one thing is very important, it's, a, it's about a teamwork and working together to, uh, to get the best outcomes for all of Queensland. Was he a good sergeant? Uh, we never actually worked together. Um, when I uh, was the Commissioner, um, the Minister was the sergeant in charge of the Police Citizens and Youth Club at Bundaberg and he certainly had a good reputation in that regard and there's no difficulty associated with this at all for me. I'm looking forward to working for and with the Minister. Commissioner, where are you at with the um, pursuit <coughs> policy review? Yeah, yeah we, we, we haven't finalised the documentation that we're going to provide to the Minister on that. Um, it, it's a significant piece of work and I think it'll be at least another week, um, maybe two weeks, uh, before we complete that uh, because there are a, a number of aspects to it and, and as you would have seen, um, again, similar to the gun issue, the aspect of police pursuits is not something that's confined to Queensland. Um, it's it's um, a challenging issue. I've always said probably one of the most difficult areas of policing in terms of the judgment and decision making and the potential consequences that go with it. But I would think at least a week, maybe two weeks before we get that report to the Minister. Mr. So how's your driving record? Look, uh, obviously, um, well, I've, I've got a zero driving record in relation to, to offences and uh, obviously it's been part of, of the job is there is checks and balances put into place and uh, I'm happy to have that go on any public record at any time if you, if you necessitate that as well. You got offences for anything else apart from driving? No, Patrick, and, uh, but, it's, but it is. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's part of being a, a community and getting on and getting on with the job. Commissioner, you, you said that... The checks that uh, on Mr Gibson that were done on... Mr. Oh, sorry, on Mr Dempsey that were done on Mr Gibson? 
Uh, when the minister's appointment was announced, he asked me to check that he didn't have any traffic convictions, and he does not. I did that check on his behalf. Um, we don't check people uh, specifically uh, when they become ministers. What we do do is put into place a security overlay for them um, in terms of uh, a whole range of things, you know, where they work and where they live, and, and that's appropriate and proper that we do that. Um, the identification of the other matters that came to light as part of doing that, um, but we don't specifically um, probe uh, and look into people's past. Did you find any of the comments of the man uh, who was killed in a, a shooting at Bracken Bridge yesterday, not a shooting, but he was shot by police, are you concerned by some of the comments from his family members who have questioned um, the conduct of the police officer? Uh, look, uh, that's uh, subject uh, to an ongoing investigation and I can give you an absolute assurance that every one of those matters that's been raised will be part of the investigation uh, and that will be something that will be considered by the coroner uh, and that's not necessarily going to wait. The coroner is regularly briefed and updated on the status of the investigation. Uh, so whilst it's public knowledge as well in terms of those claims, all of that will be put before the coroner uh, and, and obviously uh, it would be quite wrong for me um, to comment you know, in terms of the credibility or otherwise of those claims. All of that has got to be part of the investigation. It will be. Uh, we do this work for the coroner under the legislation but as well the CMC are involved in this investigation as well in an overview, overviewing capacity. This review of the um, legislation and sentencing, did, did that come about because of the two homicides and the police shooting or because the figures came to light this week? Uh, the intention of the Minister uh, and the new government to look at this issue uh, is, is a matter that obviously for the Minister and the new government, uh, but certainly uh, that consideration of uh, legislation is something that we in the Police Department would also strongly support. How's the investigation going into the two murders? Uh, any leads yet? Uh, well, they're working very hard. We have large teams of detectives involved in both. There is still no indication, although we never ruled anything out, that there's any link between the two. Uh, and we appeal to the public for information. Uh, Crime Stoppers, 1800 333 000. Uh, and if you have any information, even um, if you think it could possibly help, we, we urge and ask you to provide that information, but at this stage there's been no breakthrough in either investigation. Yeah. Anything else at all? Well, look, thanks again for your time today. I greatly appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you very much.